Hi guys, good evening. How are you all doing? I hope you're all doing fine. I'm here to put a car to the house, but there is queue here. There are no taxes. Normally, it's taxes that we bought here. It's lots of passengers waiting on taxes to arrive. But I met I met this beautiful personality here, who is a diasporan and is ready to talk to me. So guys, stick on and let's enjoy this conversation. We are out again, all the way from London to Ghana. Oh, I'm so excited to introduce him to you. So, so please, can you introduce yourself? My name is Reggie Kwame the Queen, and I'm from um, South London. Um, I stay. Well, I used to live in Balham, but now I'm staying in uh, Brixton in South Brixton. London. Brixton. Okay, yeah. so you're welcome to Ghana. Oh. Darcy, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what motivated you to come back to Ghana? Well, to tell the truth, my parents brought me and my sisters to Ghana when I was um, 14. And then they wanted us to stay in Ghana and to school. At the time, we really missed London. So we were insistent on coming back. Okay. So they brought us back when, we were, when I was 15. My sister was uh, 14, my other sisters were 11 and 10. And um, we stayed in London, finished our schooling, and then came back again when I was 18. When I was 18, I loved Ghana a little bit more. I was a bit more mature. Okay. So then we came back again when I was 22, and then 24, and then now in my 30s. Well, now in my 30s, and then on from there, I really began to love Ghana more than London. Oh, okay. Yeah. That means this is not your first time coming to oh, Ghana. absolutely not. Okay, so were you born in London or you yeah. born? Yeah, born in London. Born in London, And okay. came to Ghana for the first time when I was 14. 14, yeah. okay, so. And it was a big, you know, shock to see such a, in fact, it was my first, my first um, trip abroad okay. was Ghana. Was Ghana. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those days, when you were living in London, yeah. when, they talk about Ghana when you hear the name Ghana what, yeah. what comes to your mind to tell the truth nothing really prepares you for going to a country for the first time okay because growing up my mum and dad uh, did be a water country so all the time they were speaking to you that's where I got my tree from. Oh, okay. And um, from growing up being around tree. So in, London. Did, in London. So you could speak tree in I London. Could speak tree in London only from what I heard my your parents, parents speak. speak. Okay. So then when I got to Ghana for the first time when I was fourteen, seeing the country was a real shock because I'd heard them speak tree, but to tell the truth, I hadn't really heard them speak about Ghana. Okay. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> so when that's fine. So when we came. When we came, it was a real shock mm -hmm. to see how different the houses were, to see how different the people were, the marketplace and all that. But at 14, you don't quite understand all you want is what you're familiar with. Okay. So we went back to, to London, then 17, 19 and 20 and then onwards from there. Every time I came, I loved it more. Alright, so when you started growing up after 14, when you came back again, what, what was your impression? Well, to tell the truth, I started to realize that London is a place where I'm, I'm familiar with because I was born there. But Ghana is a place where I feel very culturally rooted and, um, you know, semi country, I am a dead. The, 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 the tree would come off my lips and it would be pleasing to me. And then also the reaction I would get from people. But it's very obvious to them that I'm That's not your... a natural tree speaker. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I love it. Yeah. I so, alright. When I heard you too, it was through speaking your tree that I learned that, oh, maybe you are not a Ghanaian. There's a or... high possibility, <laughs> that yes. You that are not guy, a Ghanaian yeah. or you're just yeah. learning to speak. Yeah. So, so far, how is your experience with the people so far well, in Ghana? Well, this, this trip in Ghana has probably been one of my most immersive in that. Most of the time when I've come, so all through my late teens, my 20s and my 30s, I've always been um, chaperoned by my, my brother or okay. his kids, taken everywhere. This time, this time and last time, I've gone out on my own. It, um, in fact, almost every day I've come into Medina mm -hmm. or Accra mm -hmm. or Circle 
or um, I had a friend in East Legon. Okay. So I've been really going out on my own, um, learning how to use the, the local transport, speaking the dialect, learning, you know, I, I'm very familiar with the money anyway, but exchanging money on my own, buying on my own. So I would say this time has been my most, um, I would say, authentic trip. Okay. Because I'm, I've been moving on my own like totally independent and the experience with the people is it hospitable enough oh, are they good to you I, I would say more so than ever this time because um when, when they hear that the tree is not your natural first language they are ready to help they're ready to help and you know they're very um, help, um accommodating uh, okay. complimentary you know, oh, why are they? Mm. You know, say, say, you know, I, they, they yeah. see that I'm trying. Yeah. Um, how would I say you're trying in Chile? Uh, we are there. We are there. Uh, so they, they, they really, they really want to see somebody try to immerse in the, you know, mini one cup, mini one cup of food. <laughs> so they want to stop the English and continue in the tree. So what I need to do is when I'm in the UK, speak tree more there so that I'm better when I return. All right, yeah. okay, that's nice. Yeah. All right, so have you tried any business in Ghana so far? Well, to tell the truth, my, my brother um, has bought he, he bought an apartment mm -hmm. and what we're looking to do is maybe get more land and do more building so that we can have places to rent okay. um, he always wanted us to have some sort of income in Ghana so that when we come we don't necessarily have to save the pounds in order to come so land and building and property would be viable for us um, although at the moment you know there's this um, inflation problem yeah. with the cement yes it's yes. going up so all the all the materials are incredibly difficult if you buy yeah. something on monday on tuesdays more yes so. in about six months the inflation like the prices have increased for about 50 percent on iron roads now the price of iron rods have increased so much, selling at 9,200 Ghana CDs per ton. That's crazy because we started the year at about 6,600 CDs. And so we've moved to almost 50% increment in less than six months. Yes. You see, 50% is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I was listening to a radio show when I woke up the other day and the energy between the politicians, the guy was adamant. <laughs> that the, the person in power now was lying that what they've done to the economy is almost is almost criminal you know but the guy in power was um defending was, was very much in defense yes and it was it, to tell you, it was a very interesting conversation but i said one of these guys is telling the truth and one of them is Normally the politicians, that's what it is. It's kind of like a two-party state that we are in. It's either NDC or MPP. So when MPP is ruling, they tend to defend whatever absolutely, they do. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And the other party too is in contradiction with whatever they are doing. Though they keep arguing and arguing and it doesn't lead us anywhere. anywhere. It doesn't lead anywhere. It's just that I think we should have an agenda so that any party that comes in, any government will follow the same agenda so that we can build the nation. That's a fantastic but idea. There is no such thing. Any project that MPP is doing now, right. should MPP not win in the next election and NDC comes to power, that project will be put on hold. Do you understand? I completely understand. And it's frustrating because it's frustrating. the cycle continues and you know if there was some sort of immersive um, like meeting of minds. Yes. But they're all they're, they're, they're obsessed with being the opposition. Normally they don't even care about us. They, they don't really care. <laughs> you know what? It's 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 so sad because it's the people on the ground and getting up every day working who are suffering yeah the politicians within a short term they can allocate you know quite a comfortable life for themselves of course of course you can see someone today like as we are here now yes, yes. nobody but as soon as the party comes to power yeah. and that person has a connection yes with someone at a position in the party the next few months you see that the person is very rich riding yes riding in big cars v 
eight and all that so that's the country we live in but now we are just concentrating on what we can do individually Wonderful. yes that's individually wonderful. because you can't just put your trust in the government yes i, I agree i agree <laughs> and to tell the truth london isn't much different it's either it's either the conservative party or the labor party mm -hmm. and the parties are not necessarily interested in coming together mm -hmm. to get at their best results they're interested in being in opposition okay and they're, they're more interested in the fight than anything else yes so <laughs> it's just like democracy the way they do it is just like the same everywhere when you go to the u.s it's either the democrats or the republicans yeah i'm, I'm just i'm just I'm deflated about the whole thing. But like you say, there's hope in the individual. Yeah. There's hope in the individual yeah. and um, being proactive. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. So uh, talking about business and you investing hey, in real estate. Right? Yes. So how do you see a uh, working environment here compared to where you're co coming from? I mean, to, to tell the truth, whenever I, whenever I look at uh, the construction business uh, oh, specifically no, that's a, mm -hmm. um, you see many buildings unfinished mm -hmm. yeah. and many buildings are erupt, e erected to a certain point and then they stop yes and, and uh, it's quite interesting to see that a lot of these places you don't see the workmen on site or any kind of and, and one of my um, uncles uh, he said to me many people begin the build and they 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 they, they, they come to a standpoint in their finances yeah so the building just stops um, and it's, it's it's very disconcerting i mean personally if if we begin me and my brother starting this land and building uh -huh. i want to begin and complete yes because if you have the finances if you delay a bit the prices will keep skyrocketing and then that will affect point? the competition yeah. yes that is so what is you need a solid kind of income <laughs> yeah and you need a solid plan because uh -huh. to see a half-raised building even in the center of a crowd when when i was coming into a crowd today with a draw draw you know there, there are beautiful buildings because we are in the center of a crowd and um, uh, a lot of the money is here but still there's places that are, are, are erected and there's no work happening and nothing so so in answer to your question it really concerns me to see that um projects are begun but not not completed um so hopefully if i'm if, if, any project I'm a part of, I would like to sidestep that pitfall. Yeah. All right, so far, have you started working with any locals? No, my brother has. Your so brother has, because okay. I'm in the UK the majority of the time. Okay. Um, when I come, then I see what's happened, what's but I don't work face-to-face right. -to -face or hand-to-hand -hand with any yeah all right okay so so far would you advise uh others with that for to come back and invest in ghana it, it, the, the one um positive is that mm -hmm. right now the rental market is hot so if you have a place and it's a decent place and you you, you set it out um to be rented they will go they, they they you know um people there's a demand for but in in terms of building and you know having the finances in place um i would say you really have to make sure that you're strong economically before you come because um, it's difficult but um, once you've completed you will get a return okay so i would advise for them to invest okay apart from real estate what other opportunities do you cite here in uh, ghana me, me personally i mean like for instance if you have a shop or a store or you do some kind of business i'm not sure because I was, in fact i do have a friend who does a, a wig business wigs wig. and hair yeah and, hair, wigs and, okay. hair. and she said you know one wig can be a thousand five and you know you, if you buy it wholesale you can get it quite low so i would say there's a good you know um rate of return in that business but i'm not familiar with many other businesses so i wouldn't be able to say okay yeah, yeah. okay all right it's been nice talking it's to been you it's been so nice meeting you and talking to you <laughs> wow yeah.
it's just an opportunity we're here at the same time at the right yes it is yeah. yeah thank you so much thank for you your... good luck with your channel oh cool. thank you so thank much you. i'm thank happy you. to have met you and thank for you. you to share your experience with me thank you very thanks much. for coming thank to ghana <laughs> those buildings and the one at the back there that is the bank of ghana yeah at ghana commercial bank for years oh okay yes Oh. Well, I don't know which branch. This, this is the head office. Oh wow! And at the other uh, opposite is, is the Bank of Ghana, the Central Bank the of Central Ghana. Bank, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, so like I told you, the queue was becoming longer and longer with no taxis arriving for boarding. So we had decided eventually to walk home. So here we are on our way home. Oh, come along with us. Oh. Traffic congestion in Central Accra. Let's cross. So this is how people struggle every blessed day, especially Mondays and Thursdays, you know, to go to work and even to come back home. Yeah, kudos to all who wake up very early at dawn, go to work and come back late. It's not easy. Have you experienced this kind of traffic before in London? When, whenever there's a train strike, and they've been doing that a lot this year, so 2023, uh -huh. um, the bus queues uh, triple immediately. Okay. All the people that would be going by train are going by bus. So the queues are massive, but the thing is the buses are very regular. And plus they are five times the size. Okay. Yes. What do you mean by when the plane strikes? Like the, 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 the train because the train drivers uh, in London currently are striking. Oh okay, they are on strike. Yeah, okay. they're on strike. So every two weeks there's no train. There's no train. So on those days you see this, what what you're seeing here. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's the only instance, but in Ghana. No, this is regular, yeah. Yes, this is it's, more regular, it's a regular yeah. thing in Ghana it's here. No, it's not regular in the UK. Oh, okay. it's when, when you have the strikes. Okay, all right. Then it's, 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 it's an experience for you. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Mabel, believe me. Wow. Okay. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Thank Enjoy you very much. Night. Thank you. Okay, we'll meet. We'll meet again. Yeah. Guys, I'm home now after a long day. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think about the video and my outfit of the day. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>